Okay, what I try to do. If you leave these brushes in this solution, it eats it. I found that out the next day when I came back and I picked up a brush and all the bristles were disappeared. So don't leave them in there. I line these up from the darkest to the lightest. In this case, some of my greens and the cream is probably the lightest, okay? And then my browns are all up in here and my red is right here. So I just, you know, as I set this stuff up, I like to use it uh, so I don't forget. Like if I turn around, another thing too is, I went ahead and I marked all these buckets because it's all purple. It's all purple water. So when you just pick it up and you look at it, if, you're, if you like set something down or turn around and somebody else grabs something, you might forget what you have in your hand. So just mark them so you know because once it's out of the can or once it's out of the, the gallon container, and you don't know what you got in your hand until it's too late. So there's there's video that I've put out there already on just you know basically you know splashing you know the material down, which I'll illustrate. I'll take a, a teal and I'll pick a stone and I'll literally just actually before I before I do any work, I want to spray it down with a little bit of water, and here's why. If we have a, a, a dry concrete piece, I'm going to tag this with just a little bit of water because when these things come out of their molds, there's a little bit of mold release, a little bit of form release. It's very small. It's not going to affect our stain. It's not going to affect our seal but it might create a little bit of like a tension on the surface which will not allow your uh, your stain to penetrate evenly so I just tag the surface with of the rock with water just to dampen the surface just a little bit you don't want standing water but you do want it to be lightly hit lightly tagged because it helps uh, it helps the stain so I literally, I just take this, and I just take a chip brush, and I just tag. I'm liberal. I put down, you know, quite a bit. And then, of course, on the outside edge, I just tag the outside edge. I just stained that teal. When it's done oxidizing and it's done doing what it's doing, it'll model completely, uh, it'll model naturally. And I won't have to do anything else to it, okay? Now you can see here that there's pits and valleys where some of the stain is uh, grouped together and there's a lot more. That's perfect. That just means that there's going to be more intense color in those particular areas. With this type of a stain system, flat work is really awesome because you've got gravity working with you. And you can puddle things and have a lot of fun creating some interesting color, uh, color combinations. So, this is this first method here is simple. I just I just tagged it uh, with uh, with teal. But I want to spend the next uh, couple moments here showing you a couple other elements that you can, or a couple other things that you can do and tricks that you can do to create variations in color. So one is uh, color uh, color blending, where I take like part of the stone, part of the rock. I'll take say cream. And I'll take a cream and I'll just tag a certain area with it. I'm liberal, I'm just splashing it down here. And let's just go ahead and finish up the end here. Notice how I just left kind of like a vein of color. Now I'll come back with, say, redwood. <laughs> and I'm just going to tag the area that I didn't hit with the cream. Now there, you can't tell because everything's purple and you got to kind of remember in your mind what you've done, but I've got two colors on here, cream and redwood. And what's going to happen, we'll see later on, is it's just going to blend and it's going to migrate and there'll be like a wet on wet application 
where the colors just kind of migrate, but they're burning right now, or they're doing an, or, or, or reacting with the surface of our panel right now. So there is a color dynamic that's taking place that we can't tell yet because the product is still in its, you know, in its early state. But as this dries down, we're going to see this start to change, okay? So this, this stone right here is where we just patched it. We just basically dropped two colors down here. You can't tell, but those, those are the two colors. Next, you'll take some black walnut. Now remember, black walnut is probably uh, our most, uh, our heaviest color, you know, our, our most dramatic color. So I'm just going to tag the top here like this. And then I'll take fawn. And so what we've created is like a two-tone stone. Sometimes you'll have color striations through your rock. All right? So we've got black walnut up here and fawn right through here. Another thing that looks really cool, let's take, uh, let's go back to our cream. And let's just really lay down a lot of color on this big stone here. I'm not worrying about the joints. We'll come back and deal with that later when everything is said and done. So I got this whole stone covered with the cream, which is kind of a soft tan, almost like a little bit of a, a light yellow color. Now I'll come back with my darkest color, walnut, and just splash. So I just put in splashes of my darker color. Same thing with our color blending. They're going to mesh together, meld together, but I'm going to have high concentrations of different color in, in, these, in these, uh, this area right here. Let's get into some, some greens. A lot of time, and by the way, this stuff goes really, really, really far. These gallons, this will be the 40, 43rd panel that I've stained with this, um, this uh, set right here. And by the way, I've even thrown out some of the acid when I was finished because I just didn't, I didn't want to pour it back into the uh, container. So I'm about a third left and I've done 40, this is be my 43rd panel, okay? So this stuff goes a, a long way, all right? Uh, that's probably five kitchens. Nah, at least four kitchens, I would say. There's four kitchen setups in, in, in that, in, four, in 40 some odd panels. If you fa factor an average of 10 panels per kitchen, you know, so you, it does go, it does go uh, pretty far. Teal. Just going to kind of color that up. Splash a little bit on there. And we'll go with some olive. As Don said earlier, you can go back and re tag, you know, some more of this if you wish. That will give you, you know, Deeper colors, darker colors, golden leaf, slightly different. It is. <laughs>
when we do our seat wall top, we'll probably get involved with a lot of the splashing and create some color veins. All right. Now I'm using the full color scheme for this panel. And I can do that because I don't think any of these colors are outside of the norm of a natural rock look, you know. If you want to eliminate some of the colors and just keep it browns or add more greens with just very few browns, um, you've got an option. Uh, the redwood, the redwood is called redwood, but it's, it's got its moments of red. It's not like a true full red. Right, Don? And there's nothing stopping you from coming back over even this with another stain like True Tint and adding any kind of other color as well. The thing I like about this is it still keeps the, the porosity of the concrete open. There's no film forming residue that's, you know, clogging up the surface of our, of our stone right now, okay? But you guys are seeing this firsthand. I mean, I'm not really putting any skill into this. This is, this is so easy. He said that's why you guys would love it. That's why you guys would love it. It's, and I'm not just thinking about you, I'm thinking about your workers. You know? You give a, you give a guy a, a class on how to do this. You know, if he can't do this, then I, I don't know. <laughs> you might want to look for another worker, you know? Or another laborer, somebody who's going to, you know, have your... Have your uh, have some production in mind. We'll do another big uh, colored one with the black walnut. This golden wheat looks really cool too. Exactly. It's easier when it's laying down. It's totally easier to stain these while they're down. You could never get some of these anomalies in the color if we had to stand this up and spray it. Okay? That so, being said, you certainly could spray them afterwards, and you would just get color that just kind of runs uniform. A lot of people stain that way. We'll just finish something, and then they'll just do big wafts of different colors, and it will do that. But these are going to be more precise. It'll look more like stone that was set in place. <laughs> The other thing I like about this is all of our pieces could be pre-cut and we show up at the job site, it's already stained, it's already colored. If you have a cross section of this or pictures of this or even a panel in your truck, you could pull the panel, of, you could pull this right out, of the right out of your truck and the client can sign off on it right then and there. You know you're not going to screw it up because you're using the same the same coloring system. But you might make two panels, one with the darker browns, one with the more greens or, or more light colors or something like that. You could have one or two panels and say, which, which, which system do you like? You know you just took out this color and that color, or you kept those colors in and took out others. So I like it because it's, you pretty much are going to get a true representation of, you know, they're going to get a true representation of what they're going to get. And that saves, you, that saves you time and money when you're talking about, you know, a client who might be on the fence. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that, you know, I'll ask the client, you know, hey, what, uh, what kind of, what do you feel like? Do you like earth tones or, you know, kind of get a feel for what they're, where they're going with it, with, for color? But if you give a client too many options, that could be extremely bad for you. Because <laughs> they're going to sit and ponder and, you know, they honestly, they don't even know what they want half the time. Or you'll get, well, I don't know, I'll, I'll know it when I see it. Well, I'm sorry, that's not good. We're not going to go that route. But believe it or not, 
you got that element up there to deal with too. So, you know, giving them the finished product, the finished piece, is going to play nicely for you, okay? So, we've just completed the stain job of this panel. Uh, five minutes, seven minutes tops. If I wasn't talking, I'd probably have it done in less than five minutes. So very efficient, very fast. Now we just gotta let this stuff just dry down. These puddles are perfect as, as, it, as it dries down. Um, we might wanna uh, move this outside and put it outside so the air gets outside the sun can get it. That'll accelerate the process and we'll get the evaporation. The eva uh, most of the stuff will evaporate out. All right.